Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here. Welcome to the start of the second season in my Lazio Football Manager 2016 Let's Play. And if you did in fact enjoy the first season, make sure to drop a like on the video. Let's see if we can smash 200 likes once more like you did in the previous episode to finish off the season. But the first thing we're going to do here is check out the competition expectations review. First up, Champions League. The team is not expected to get beyond the group stage of the Champions League. Well, we definitely surpassed that in the previous season. It shows you the expectations and the stature of Lazio uh, compared to maybe other teams that I would do previously. Say, like AC Milan last year. I won the Champions League and won the league in the second season. I almost feel some expectation on myself to kind of repeat that. But Lazio, they're similar to AC Milan, but not quite as big team. And like when I did Manchester United as well, you always have those high expectations. But the league expectation is to qualify for the Champions League. So a top three finish again, I think that can be achievable for us. Like apart from Juventus, I feel we should be finishing like second minimum. But I want to try and win the league as well. I want to try and improve this season. And if we will or not, well, you can have to yeah, watch this second season to find out. And then also the Italian Cup semi-final is the expectation to reach. To me, like the domestic cup of competitions, I don't take too seriously. I really want to do well in the league and Champions League. But I don't... Yeah, I'm not one to play young players anyway in those cups. I still... I want to try and win all games I play because I feel bad when I lose. Like, I want to win every single game. <laughs> As I want to give yeah, our team the best chance, really. But this season has to be a big one uh, for us. Well, I've got my contract now to the end of 2018. So it is an important season. This time next season... I will have one year left to run on my contract. So it's an important year, this one, for me. Maybe I could yeah, request a new contract or just be given one. Well, we'll just have to see how we go. But also, additionally to dropping a like on the video, make sure you do that. But leave a comment if you would just like me to do this series for the rest of FM16 until FIFA 17 comes out. You know, FIFA is always big for me to do at the start of the game, especially, yeah, for my channel. But... I'm considering starting a Manchester United save when I achieve what I want here with Lazio, like winning the Champions League, or would you like me to just focus on this a lot? It just really depends. I'm just weighing things up. So I hope you guys understand that. But just thought I should get that out there as we go into the transfers, and there's going to be a lot of action here. First, we just sort by the fee and yeah, by the most expensive, let's say. And no doubt you're going to see, yeah, going out, we've got a few players and Antonio Candreva to Manchester City. Uh, that was an interesting move. Just under 40 million. That's big money without a doubt. 39.5 million coming in. He's not a player I wanted to sell at all going into the preseason. And actually, well, I didn't even realize he's injured. He torn knee ligaments. So it would have been a bit of a bigger injury. I think he might have picked it up. Uh, when he was playing international games, I think so. He played into. He was doing well there, but yeah, he must have got injured. Only played two games, but obviously uh, for the Euros. Uh, who do you think will win the Euros? Uh, by the way, in real life, so yeah, that's why I just think Kandreva. I didn't really consider the injury aspect because he is. He's going to be 30 years old. What February, um, start of the next year. Uh, going to, but that's still be part of this season. He just the interest from Man City, and he wanted to go. Initially, I rejected them. I did that. I rejected them. But then he came to me right away. He's like, "Oh, you're blocking my move and everything like that." Usually, I'm pretty hard against those players, and I do whatever I can to make them stay. Like in terms, yeah, I want to try and make them stay with what I say to them. But to me, I thought I should negotiate with Man City uh, because of his age, especially. You know, he's 29 years old. Uh, I look at the move. What's the move going to look like three or four years from now? When a player gets in his 30s, his value drops dramatically. Like, in about three or four seasons, his value will be lucky to be half of that. They just drop dramatically. So, yeah, had a bit of uh, that in my mind. And also, I saw it as an opportunity to sign maybe a player that would be good for the series. And a player I really like as well. But we'll get into that. And that was only the really big sale we had. In terms of a first team player, I wanted to get rid of a few players in the under 20s that were old enough to sell, like their experienced players enough. You know, like we got a few of these, like Barisha, he had a couple games, didn't he, for us? But yeah, we sold him 2.5. 
million, then a million uh, for four players there. There's Vinicius, uh, Ivan Vajic, Alvaro Gonzalez, uh, Josip Alez, and then even uh, Ronaldo, the Brazil, one of the Brazilian Ronaldos in the game <laughs> uh, that starts at Lazio. He's really fit. Like, natural fitness is 20, so he has that going for him. He's a good passer, good technique, good first touch, what you expect from a Brazilian player, but yeah, definitely not good enough uh, for us. So we'll just, yeah, let him go. So we did get some extra money. If you add up like 2.5, then the million, the million, the million, <laughs> and 250k. Yeah, I was pretty impressed with that. Then letting players go out on a free, well, letting them apart from, <laughs> yeah, Miroslav Closer, he wanted to leave. So, you know, he went to Befica. And then the players uh, we replaced them with. First up, you know about Naguera and Ruli. I don't really need to go through them too much, but we'll just check out their attributes if they're improving. Naguera doesn't look too bad, but judging off the ratings, the suitability, Rugani is our best centre-back. No doubt about that, and he's only going to be getting better because he's aged, but Naguera's right up there. According to the report, he's as good as Gentiletti, Auburn, or Radu, any of our other centre-backs. So that would prove as a really good signing if he performs that way. He's been good in the uh, friendly games. So that is good to see. And then Geronimo Rulli, uh, you Oh, look at that. Wow, I didn't expect that. About a week ago in game, he wasn't improving at all. And he's one on ones. Wow, 19 and reflexes. And the rest are, yeah, pretty strong. And some other like 17s in mentals, which is pretty nice. And with Marchetti, I didn't end up selling Marchetti. You, you saw I sold uh, Berisha. So, yeah, Marchetti, I just changed his role to a backup player for us. So he hopefully he won't complain about that. But yeah, Geronimo Rulli, he's a goalkeeper. Like, we've got a few positions where we have players. Also, there's Olympic Games as well. So he was part of that. Uh, so a lot of, yeah, a lot of players, whether they're going to be playing in the Euros or in the Olympic Games, there's players keeping themselves match fit going into the season. And then the friendlies we had are, and everything like that. So we're a very fit team. Most of our team anyway going into the start of the season, which is not generally the case for me. I don't start too well, but I have a feeling we can start well to this season. So, John O'Reilly, yeah, I was going to say, he's one of those players that could be part of a Champions League winning squad. And maybe we'll move on to the next one now. Riyad Mahrez from Leicester City. And I'm smiling right now while saying this. Riyad Mahrez, 30 million. That's a big money for him. It. 9.5 million cheaper than Kondreva, so that's where I see the profit being made, and also on the wages, uh, we got Riyad Mahrez on basically half the wages, uh, Kondreva moved on to Man City for, his uh, attributes are going down a bit, but that's basically just because it's like pre-season, sometimes you see that, but the attributes haven't officially gone down, like, yeah, all those attributes were the same when we signed him, so yeah, he'll, he'll get back into the season, uh, get on some good form, but yeah, he was doing well uh, for the international games. Look at that, dominating, scoring goals, assisting, everything like that. And this is what I mean with signing someone like Mares. He is a hype player right now. Like on YouTube, like people are obviously searching for Leicester City and everything like that. Vardy and Mares are a really popular search because they were fantastic players. So hopefully for me, Mares, he can do a lot of things this season for me, do really well, score a lot of goals, have some big names, I can use his name in the title a bit uh, when he does, I probably will anytime he scores a goal to be honest, to kind of use that, but yeah, like for me, uh, he was a smart signing for me for multiple reasons, uh, for just this save to be a good player of course, uh, perfect for that inside for or forward, forward position, like I didn't just sign him like because he's a popular player, that would be foolish, he's going to do so well for us, he's perfect for that right side inside forward position he's left only so that suits him as an inside forward places shots so he cut it he can cut in uh, take those shots runs with the ball he's a really exciting player and he was one of my favorite players in the past season in the Premier League and actually one of my favorite players now as a whole so yeah he was a really smart signing uh, for me and for the series I'll have to say and so we did need to sign that replacement. So he was basically replacement for Kondreva, and he's basically just four years younger. So he's got that, say in four years, Kondreva will be 33, value going all the way down. And in four years, Mares will be the same age Kondreva is at now. And so he'll still have that good value like Kondreva does. So I really like Mares, the look of him, and 
the type of player he is and for the series will be very good. And then also a striker signing. We made actually two striker signings. Uh, Loic Remy, he can also play on the left side, like left inside forward, cut in on his right. So yeah, thought about that. He's a really good penalty taker as well. He scored one penalty in the preseason, so it was good to see. Didn't play too much. Uh, can play striker. Um, I looked at his attributes, and he has a lot of those, like, 14s, 15s, not too many uh, of the yellow attributes, 16 or higher, but, yeah, pretty balanced. I got him at a bargain because he was transfer listed. As you know, Remy is generally transfer listed by Chelsea at the end of the first season, in my experience anyway. But th that's the thing. When he was played, he did well in the league. Look, two goals in three starts and two assists. So that's a great impact for mine. Info, you see there, signed for 8.5 million, and his value right now is just 10.75, and his value was actually higher than that when we signed him, so that's a bargain signing for me, it's under his value, so even if he doesn't absolutely start, if he still scores a decent amount, it'll be a nice transfer, and then the main striker signing was Andrea Bellotti, he's a very well-rounded striker, he can play complete forward or advance forward on the highest role and duty. However, too, yeah, like that's 100% or it's just full, however you want to uh, describe it. He's a really good striker. For example, play advance forward, all those key attributes. It's like lowest there is 13, and that's for what? Passing and decisions. Not the most crucial attributes uh, for that position. But. Yeah, there's not too many low attributes at all. And he's a quick striker with 16 pace. He's got 14 strength, so he's not weak as well. Yeah, I just think he's a really good striker. Torino, uh, last season he scored 12 goals. Torino actually had a good season. They finished about 7th, 8th. So, yeah, they did really well. It's not the best goal-scoring season ever, but with better players surrounding him in our team, I reckon he can score a lot of goals. So we didn't bring in too many. We did let go of uh, quite a bit. I was happy with that. But all the players we brought in are impact players. Definitely three of them are probably like major starters. Like most games I want to be starting them. Obviously that's Geronimo Rulli, Riyad Mahrez, and then Belotti. Then you have Remy and Naguera that's probably going to rotate. I think Belotti just ahead of Remy would be the choice. So the first game of the season, we'll just have the one game in the season because introducing those transfers basically would be instead of me playing the second game like I usually would uh, in an episode. So we'll just continue. Uh, today is the game against Asulo, so it's a good opportunity. It's away from home though, so you have to be a bit careful. And you might think I didn't really improve the defense in some people's view, but I got one of the best goalkeepers in the game that's only going to keep improving and I did get Naguera but you probably think he's not a huge change he's similar rating to our other center backs and our defense was you could say it's a problem but we finished second so and, and that's the thing our defenders actually got good ratings if you look at last season all our defenders like average rating was over seven so Maori contract clause oh yeah he's gonna retire at the end of the season we had a testimonial game for him so I'm not sure if that's going to be possible because he's going to plan to retire. So, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure if he could trigger his contract. I don't know how that's going to play. But look again. He does so well in the mentals and uh, technicals. Even some physicals are going up. Look at that pace. <laughs> that's pretty good. But if we go into his information, you can see he plans to retire like next season, like the end of next season. So, I'd love to get him a Serie A win. That will be absolutely amazing, and I'll have to use him, obviously. Or well, not, I'd want to use him, more specifically. Yeah, Balfiore is eligible uh, for a professional contract. Uh, definitely will give it to him now, because, yeah, 100%, we'll just give him exactly what he wants. Just, yeah, no worries about that. Cheap contract, not to worry. Three years. Yeah, it will be interesting to see if he can come into the first team as a fullback. But, yep, today, uh, Sassuolo... Yeah, it's interesting. Look at the club philosophies. That's that's really high. And you notice the loss this season, but I would expect, yeah, our overall balance is still solid. So that's why I, I've actually brought a lot of money into the team before we go to team selection, everything like that. Uh, this season, obviously, just under 40 million for Kondreva. We go back to the previous season. Uh, the transfer fee, the big one, was De Vrij. So almost 40 million two seasons in a row, like those big signings. So regardless if you think they're good players or not, that's big money coming in. Obviously, you see we spent money on Rugani, so you got to yeah take that into account. And for Manchester United, what did he do last season? 
he just got a 6.96 rating. And he was so good for us in the first few games he played, the, those league games. So no doubt, he's a good centre-back. I didn't sell him because he thought he was a bad player. Or I thought he was a bad player, 100%. So yeah, that's what I want you guys to know. When I sell a player, it doesn't mean I don't like them. I got a lot of that. I get like comments all the time, especially with my Manchester United series I did in the past. Like people have like this idea I don't like certain players because I sold them. I just thought it was the yeah the right the right deal. And so Jerono really, he needs a rest. It says hmm, that's a bit disappointing because I wanted to play him in this first game, but I guess we're going to just leave him out because this is the I set up this team already. So if we go to team selection. And, and just submit the team. And Mara is starting here, of course. Oh, he's a big play for us. Yeah, we can't we can't select him. But yeah, I just thought, <laughs> oh, he would be available. So that's a bit disappointing. So we're going to have no goalkeeper on the bench. Goalkeepers barely get injured uh, in Football Manager. Very, very rarely. And in real life as well. So yeah, you, uh, it would be funny if that happens though. So hopefully, um, yeah, we can get him back. And he can... He can make a good impact for us, but yeah, Federico Marchetti for this first game. So, yeah, it's not going to... Uh, uh, maybe I'll just use that as a little precaution. If we concede some goals in this game, it's because, yeah, we don't have Geronimo really, our big signing. Big signing, but it was a free transfer. But let's head on into the first game of the season. Oh, it just would it would have been more hype because you have Belotti debut, and then uh, Drussi, we signed him in January last season, a really good signing for us. Uh, but then Riyad Mahrez, it's all up to him, him and Belotti to have huge games. And there's been no tactical changes at all. I just thought, improve the quality of the team, the younger guys getting more experience. Rugani maybe made a few errors uh, last season. Only a few. He was good as a whole, but he's going to learn from that now. That Exactly. He's going to learn from it and become a better player. Mistakes he made last season, he won't make again because he learned from that experience. So let's head on into it now. And I would love the three points to kick off this season. Also, guys, I noticed someone requested in the comments and also got a few thumbs up for me to put the league table on the right side. So I've done that now, but you can't see like the goal difference and stuff because then for that, I'll have to open it more. Like, yeah, and then you'll... It will cover the goal. So hopefully that will be all right. So yeah, leave in the comments if you think that's all right. Okay, throw in for Redu. Bilia, can we score a goal? It's Miss Aroli here. Vasalo trying to play out of defense, but given straight to us. Basta, Mares, Parolo, Drussi, through to Keita. Keita, I reckon, is going to have a big season as well. Like He's a player that could turn into world class. So if you look at these players, I talk about Champions League. Uh, with a new goalkeeper in Ruli. I think Keita is one of those. Here he is again on the ball. Keita, Drussi, if he keeps going as well. Parolo, Belotti on debut! He scores on debut! Andrea Belotti. What a goal. Oh, he's going to be a good sign. A lot of the hype will be around Mares, of course. And obviously, big goalkeeper signing in Ruli. But, the strikers are key players for the team. And he scores... Obviously, there was a lot of interest if I was going to like get back strikers I had last season. Uh, someone like Matri, who I had on loan, and I felt we needed someone with a bit more youth about him. And he's still like a good age, like 22. It's old enough to be a first-team player. But yeah, he's only he's going to be that kind of star of the team to lift him, uh, lift the whole team as well. But now... Out wide, Basta, Mares, can he get it? No, Basta, Keita gets a shot on target. And what an electrifying start to the game this has been. Just, yeah, we're taking shots uh, everywhere. Can't win this header. It's Sansone. It's Sansone. Straight at Marquette. Half time now. A good first half. Settling into the new season. We started really, really well with a few chances. But we'll say assertively, don't get complacent. We do need, like, uh, a couple players stressed. That's not good at all. That's Mares. I'll just say, calm down. I'll just say, I have faith in you. Hopefully, that will be a good move. Yeah, no reaction to that. Maybe Redu will try something out. Assertively, no pressure on you tonight. Usually, I do that for some younger players. Uh, but I guess if they're stressed, that could help. So maybe next time, I'll do that for both players. 
So guys, we're getting to that part in the game where we may think to make a change or two. I'm just not sure where. See to me. Okay, there's a highlight. We'll see what happens here. If we concede, I'll probably want to have made the change uh, a minute before. Redu. Come on, Marchetti. Rugani. Good pass. Now Keita. Oh, decent ball. But Bangard deals with that for them. Berardi. The chance could be for them now. I'm scared. Nah. Nah. <laughs> Please don't concede here. We, I know I need to make a change. Yeah, I need to make a change because something is coming. So, well, we defended it. It wasn't really a clear chance on goal, if I'm honest. See, if Mares was another player, I'd probably substitute him. And I think... Mm, let's bring on... Well, Zivkovic, yeah, 78%. Like, I wanted, like, Mares to do something on his debut, uh, to be honest. Actually, no, Drusi hasn't done that well. 6.6. .6. So, we'll bring on Stefano, yeah? Big Stefano. Maori. So, hopefully... He can just, yeah, be himself. He needs a bit more sharpness, but, yeah, what better way to get it than coming on and scoring a ceiling goal for us? Okay, there's a highlight right away. Oh, imagine if we score. Imagine if Maori scores coming on. He's just, he's just waiting. He's there. Can we utilize him, though? But the pass is to Belotti. Can he get it to him? Imagine! Oh, just imagine, like John Lennon. Balde Keita. It's 2-0. And he scores his first of the season in the first game. So that was a really nice goal there, Belotti. Look at the space, though. Both players, there's two there. No one was on him, really. He was making his run. And again, their goalkeeper doesn't really attempt to make a save. Whew. Uh, we can breathe a bit more now. So a good time to take Mares off, uh, I think. I wanted him to do something, but we got that second goal now. Belotti scored and created. What a debut. Now, Mares off, and we'll bring on Zivkovic. He does need a bit more sharpness in him as well. And we'll just make the two changes. I don't want to get an injury or something like that. So, yeah, Zivkovic. See, I talked about last season, Zivkovic, like, he had to challenge with Kandreva, and now it's <laughs> another player he has to deal with in Mares. So it will be interesting um, how they fight for that position. And for the final change here, we're going to bring on Patrick for Dusan Basta. Just, yeah, Basta on 69% condition and also on the yellow cards. So we'll confirm that change. Patrick is an interesting one as well if he's going to be part of the future because he's definitely not a world-class right back and Basta is getting older. So if I am going to play like a couple more seasons as we go on, again, that's something I don't really want to plan. I just want to enjoy the game. That's what I've done with this save. Maybe I'll talk about it a little bit. Like I've always wanted to do saves on YouTube that I've enjoyed in the past before I started YouTube. Like, I mean, I've talked about my Man United save, the reason I start Arsenal at the start of um, FM16 this year because I'd had enjoyable saves. I never really did Lazio before, but I have that feeling of it being just one of those saves I really enjoy playing. So, yeah, maybe I have it wrong. Maybe I don't have to just do a team I've done in the past just because I really enjoyed it. I can have that feeling potentially with any team, but we have to be careful here. We almost concede. So, yeah, what do you think about that? And maybe, yeah, I, I just don't have to do it uh, with the same team that I've enjoyed in the past. Just try and, yeah, maybe just manage the way I usually would with those teams. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how you feel about that, like how you enjoy saves, how you really get into a save with a new team or something. But yeah, I just, I think I just realized that I don't have to uh, start a save with a team I've done in the past to in get that same enjoyment from it. Uh, I can yeah generate a new good series or just a new good save in general. But anyway, enough about that. We get a decent victory here. It's always tricky start of the season. Like I mentioned, you're not going to be playing at your best. But it wasn't a bad performance, and we got to really keep up with Juventus. But more importantly, we've got to try and get results against Juventus. I think that's how we're going to have to beat them. And that's how I'd want to finish first and win the league, to be honest, to get the better over Juve in the league. So, yeah, hopefully that can happen anyway. But either way, it was a good start to the season with that 2-0 away from home victory. So that was a good start to the season, guys. Hopefully you did like my transfers. Obviously, Kandreva, once more, I'll say I didn't go into the preseason and the next season wanting to sell Kandreva. Like, I didn't transfer list him or something. Manchester City just showed interest, and obviously with the big money they can throw at him, yeah, he really wanted to leave. And if I rejected that, we'll have an unhappy player 
uh, more than likely. And it see, that's the thing. With a potential negative thing can always turn into a positive. And Mares could be really positive uh, for multiple reasons. And he did have a boost. It's not like how he was at the start of FM16. Obviously, they improved Leicester City's players because of how well they did in real life. And, yeah, you can see he has good attributes. And he is... Uh, He's a favourite player uh, for a lot of people. A lot of people just like him as a player, what he showed this season, really impressed people. So, yeah, it will be a smart signing for the series as well. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to smash the 200 likes on the video if you'd like to see daily uploads of this series. And I'll see you guys in the very next one.